Now, this is not the United States of America. This is not Israel. This is Ghana, near the University of Ghana in Legon. It's a huge ultra modern University of Ghana Medical Center. Very controversial, you remember, here at City TV and CTF. And we've brought you countless reports as to what has not been happening here. As you can see it, it looks as dead as a cemetery. Reason has not been utilized to the proper levels. Of course, it's a huge referral center that should be busy and bustling by now, but nothing as much is happening. What the, we are here to do today is to follow the minority side in parliament, the Committee on Health. They, led by their ranking member, Honorable Kwabna Mintakando, has been doing a nationwide tour of health facilities that have been abandoned. And today, the train has brought them to the University of Ghana Medical Center to test and question of authorities here as to why this facility is not being utilized. And of course, CCTV's campaign uh, that ensured the initial operationalization of the UGMC is still on. And that's what we have come here to do. So I'm going to walk in now in, through one of those vacant doors and see exactly uh, what is leading to the non-operationalization. So you can see the huge uh, facility that we have here put up uh, some years ago but not being operationalized. Now, the minority side in Parliament, the Committee on Health, the minority side of that committee, led by its ranking member, uh, the Honorable Kwabna Minto Akando, has been touring a lot of health facilities in the country, and today they've stopped at the University of Ghana Medical Center. Sir, you're welcome to City Newsroom on City TV. What motivated this uh, tour? Thank you very much. As members of Parliament, especially on the Health Committee, we are supposed to have first-hand information so that when we are debating on the floor of the House or at the committee level, we will be informed. Even if you are filing the question, you understand the particular facility or what you are talking about. And so we started this about five days ago. We are touring some of the health facilities that have been abandoned. Virtually everywhere we have gone mm. have been abandoned. Mm. That is the saddest aspect of it. And uh, What is the state of abandonment? So is it the case that there's no one there or they don't have facilities? They don't have... What, what is it that you don't you don't see when you go very to well let's let me begin from Kumau. when we went to Kumau, what we saw was that um there's a very big hospital there they started the construction i think around 2015 they moved i think they were about 65 or 60 complete and they have left it in the bush not a single block has been added to it since 2016. Mm -hmm. some part of the hospital has been bent some part too has been taken over by bush and nobody has gone to site since 2016. Mm. We think that a government or governance is, is a, I mean, it's a continuum. Mm. And therefore, this government, this present government was supposed to continue the project he, I mean, they inherited. Now, we have come to the University of Ghana Medical Center. What are your initial observations? This is, uh, I'm dis I mean, it's disheartening and uh, it's criminal, it's wickedness. I don't have any other ways to describe it like what I have described it. This is a magnificent facility that I don't think that we must abandon it like the way we are doing. Mm. Very big facility. We engage the management of the facility and if I'm not exaggerating, where people are occupying is less than 5% of the entire compound. And this is supposed to be a referral center. And the Minister of Health, Kweku Ajiman Menu, says in the future, government will demand a basic qualification of a doctor and a pharmacist certificate from anybody who wishes to practice pharmacy here in Ghana. We have more in this report. Speaking at the induction ceremony for some 410 newly qualified and registered pharmacists in Accra on the theme, pioneering the changing face of pharmacy education and practice in Ghana, the role of policy and regulation, the Minister for Health, Dr. Kweku Ajiman Menu, in his keynote address said, government will in future demand a doctor in pharmacy certificate as a basic qualification for persons who wish to be registered as pharmacists in the country as required by the World Health Organization, WHO. Today's induction ceremony has as part of the inductees the second batch of the doctor of pharmacy from the graduates which shall in the very near future be the minimum qualification for registration as pharmacists in our country by WHO prescription and standards 
that is the new trend. Now the Land and Natural Resources Minister Kweku Asoma Chairman has clarified that government will not burn impounded rosewood as suggested by the Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, that is Kwejo Owusu Efriye. Now reacting to the comment at the meet the press today, the Lands Minister said the Ministry will find better uses for any consignment that is impounded. The menace of rosewood smuggling has been a concern for government and other stakeholders for some time now. Although a ban on the felling of the endangered species has been in existence for a while, the legal business still thrives. A recent report by an international agency suggested that some government officials and high-profile politicians may be involved in the illegal rosewood trade. This compelled government to set up a seven-member committee headed by Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources Benito Owusu-Bio to look into the matter. Taking his turn at the Mid the Press series today, the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Kwekwa Sumacheme, contradicted a recent accession by the CEO of the Forestry Commission, Kwejo owusu Friye, to the effect that the Commission would burn all seized rosewood to serve as a deterrent to others engaged in the smuggling of the wood. The Ministry is not aware. When I say the Ministry, I mean the Ministry proper the Forestry Commission in this circumstance is not aware of the statement that rosewood seized will be burnt. And indeed, the seized rosewood will not be burnt. Now the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, COSAC, has served notice a war and back on an indefinite strike should government fail to honor its demands in two weeks. Now the association is, among other things, demanding the transfer of their temporary pensions into their fund account. Now, addressing the press earlier today, the Executive Secretary of COSAC, Dr. Isaac Bampo Addo, said they arrived at the decision due to government's and for fulfill promises to them. It's important to note the facts stated below, namely the National Pensions Act 208, which was promulgated in 208. It was intended to be operational on January 1st, 2009. The implementation commenced on 1st January 2010. It was to be applicable to those who were below 55 years as at 1st January 2010. Data on the contribution of individuals to the TPFE and interest accrued at 100% TB rate compounded quarterly should be made available to the schemes immediately. Crossup is serving notice that if within two weeks the issues raised are not adequately resolved, it will be compelled to embark on a nationwide strike.